Hello, today we're going to go over some basic troubleshooting on the electrical components of a lift chair using an Oaken Delta Drive setup. There are four basic components you need to be aware of. There is the motor, and there is the cable from the motor to the power supply. Some have a rectifier built in, some don't. Not necessary either way. And the hand controller and the power supply. The first thing we're going to do is go ahead and plug them in. So we take our power supply, we're going to plug that in the power. And we're going to connect the power cable to the transformer and then to the motor. Then you've got your hand controller. We're going to plug that into the motor as well. Now, if everything is functioning properly, when you press the buttons on the hand controller, the motor will move forward in and out. Now, we're going to test the different, pro the different possible problems. First thing we're going to start with is the power supply. So we have a, tw a 24 volt power supply here pretty much standard on all of these. Let's make sure you guys can see that. Okay, we're going to test the power supply. For safety's sake, I'm using just something I can fit in there as well as an alligator clip hooked up to the positive test lead. And then you take the negative test lead, you're going to check for DC voltage. And pretty much anything over 24 means that this thing is working okay. So we can roll out the transformer. Go ahead and pull these wires out because we want it to be safe. Okay. Now the next thing you could check would be the uh, power cable, but that's pretty straightforward. Either it's you know intact or it's not intact. You know, you just check the insulation, make sure it's clean. And then you've got the motor. The motor is very easy to test. Now all meters have a setting on them. You turn it on when you touch the two probes together. It gives you the nifty little contact probe. And then you can check for ohms. And all you need to do is test between this lead and this lead right here. And you see we get no tone there. No tone or anything over one ohm is okay. Anything less than one ohm or tone with less than one ohm is means you need a new motor. And last but not least, we have the hand control. That's the big one. Now on your hand control, let me set that on top of the transformer. Hope it stays in place here. Okay. On your hand control, you're gonna to want to attach your lead to the outside right here, just 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 on the outside there. And then you've got the two pins. You've got the middle pin, and then the one just to the left of it when the middle pin's pointing down. Now, you want to hear that sound when they're touching. Make sure you're on the pin, not the outer ring. And if you push a button on the remote, you see the tone stops let go of the button the tone starts again. The same thing with the middle pin. When you press the button, the tone stops. When you release the button, it starts again. The middle pin would be your up button, and the one just to the left of it would be your down button. Now as long as you have that, that continuous tone on those two pins to start with, then we know what we're testing for. You need to make sure that you're looking at it with a little divot a little dip point up. So the middle pin is going to be down, the one to the left of it is going to be the one you're also testing. And as I said, when you're testing those, you'll find that you have tone when the button button isn't pushed, and when you press the up button, no tone. If that doesn't happen, you need a new hand control. And that's pretty much it. When you've done all these tests, if everything does test out the way we discussed, then you need to double check your connections and make sure everything is plugged in. 
that the outlet that it's plugged into on the wall has power, that all the connections are tight. Because if everything is connected properly and everything tests the way I just showed you, then you have working parts. Now it's not always convenient to test for all of these. The power supply is a difficult one to test, but that one's a good one to test. By eliminating any three of the four parts as being broken, you can figure out which one's wrong. Now also, on your motor, there's a label right here. If you see the label, try and zoom in on that a little bit. There we go. Now on the label, there is a part number. You will need this part anytime you're ordering a new motor, a specialized power supply, anything like that. And that is this motor number right here. As you can see, it's uh, got numbers and periods. It's an 11 digit number. I'm gonna try and push in tighter on that. There we go. So on the label, these are the numbers you're going to be looking for right here. As long as you have those numbers, we can help you get whatever motor you need.